Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back on our pandemic projects. And uh, we previewed this one earlier. And uh, it's a, um, a Silstar Edge 40 size reel. It came in a parts lot and it came in a parts lot because the reel foot is broken. Probably somebody dropped it. And uh, that's always a problem. But I think there's enough on here that um, if you kind of wedge it into the reel seat on your pole, you should be able to get some tape or zip tie or something and hold this to it and keep it fishing. But I'm really going to do this reel because a lot of folks are interested in how to service and maintain one of these and how to take care of it, maybe a little bit better than the previous owner, but how to take care of it and keep it fishing. And overall, it's a pretty nice size reel. It uh, seems relatively smooth. I believe it's one ball bearing. The uh, 40 size can handle uh, a good amount of uh, line. It's in the 8 to 10, 12 range. And it's 12, uh, 12 pound test. It can hand handle about 150 yards. And it has that long cast tapered spool on it. So uh, let's get started. Let's show you how this reel is made, how it comes together. And if you have one of these, how to go ahead and tune it up. So I like to do this by uh, taking off the external pieces first. We'll start with the handle, which should be a screw handle because this button is not moving over here. Uh, so we'll give that a try first. Yep, it's, an, it's a clockwise rotation for a unscrew. And while I take these parts off, I want to thank the first responders and essential personnel and the emergency personnel who are working so hard during this pandemic to uh, keep us all safe and uh, restore those of us with the virus to health. Thank you for all it is that you do. Really, really appreciate it. So I uh, just took the drag tensioner knob off. That opens up the spool here. We'll go into that spool later to see what kind of drag system this has. And then we can remove the little spool uh, washer that keeps the height or helps you adjust the height on a spool. Then the click rotor here should pull off. It's going to have to walk it up the... There you go. Sometimes my hand strength isn't what I want it to be, but if you just pull up on that, it will come off eventually. And then let's take the rotor off while we're at it as well. And I want to just check to see which way... Okay, this is a traditional counterclockwise removal of the real uh, rotor nut. And you'll notice a couple of things. I'm wearing a protective glove that keeps the uh, oils and lubricants that are in the reel off of my hand. I'm also using a parts tray that's probably out of view. It's the bottom of a milk jug. And that's where I store all of the parts that I take off. Interestingly, this one has a little lock washer underneath it. Let's pull the whole rotor up here as an assembly. There's a little lock washer. so. Well, that reminds me to tell folks to take pictures along the way of what it is that uh, you're removing and a sequence of them uh, that will help you uh, when you go to reassemble the reel. All right, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil onto the junctures where the bale meets the rotor case, a little bit of oil onto the line guide, even though it's not a roller bearing. Just work that in, it'll keep it flexible. And underneath here, there's a trip lever. Just make sure that that trip lever is, is working. No need to oil this one. A lot of times you will have spring-driven trip levers here, but this one's just a bar that gets buried up top here. So no need to do that. Once we do that, we can set that aside. Let's go ahead then and open up the side case. There's four side plate screws. They are uh, Phillips head screws. So let's go ahead and take those out. And we'll see what's driving this reel underneath. Now, when I take those side plate screws out, I lay them out on my workbench here. And the reason I do that is to make sure that they're all the same length. And I know it probably sounds redundant to those of you that watch the videos on a regular basis, but there's too many times where the manufacturer will put a small screw somewhere. And if you don't identify it properly, when you go to reinstall, you're going to have some issues in terms of either it's not going to reach 
where it needs to to hold tight or it's going to overextend and uh, jam into the case or other things. And Shimano and Daiwa are two of those manufacturers that tend to use varying screw lengths in their side plates. This one looks like all of those screws are the same. I've laid them out and taken a look. They are all the same length, so those can go into my parts tray. Now I should be able to remove the side plate and see what we're looking at here. And we've got what we would typically expect of a reel that maybe needs a little bit of TLC here. We've got a lot of accumulated old grease in here. We have a plastic bushing on this side and a plastic bushing on this side. That means it's only a one ball bearing reel. We have that wire set up on the back here. That's for the anti-reverse. So when we go clean that, that little wire setup is going to go in this slot here. It'll uh, control the anti-reverse. And then this is the anti-reverse override on this side. But right now I want to take the rest of the reel apart. So I'm going to remove the screw that holds the axle shaft to the cross line block. Put that on my bench for a moment pull up the axle shaft and I can, you can see that this is very sticky grease so this reel has not been serviced probably hasn't been serviced since it was new and that's a that's a kind of a shame on you situation it's uh, if you've got one of these reels regardless of what the price is that you paid that reel should be serviced on an annual basis it makes no sense not to protect your investment, whether your investment's $30 or $130 or $300, you should be servicing this once a year, regardless of the amount of time you've actually used the reel. Because as you can see from this reel, that uh, that grease is dried out, and dried out grease is uh, like sludge in an engine. It's just going to slow things down and eventually may cause it to fail. Same thing here, I'm taking those three screws out that hold the pinion gear in place. I'm laying these on the bench as well. I'll make sure they're all the same size. I don't think that many of the setups like this would have a different one, but you never know. I'm just going to leave them here now. I noticed that my crosswind gear and crosswind block fell out, that's okay. Now we should be able to remove the pinion gear and we'll give this a good cleaning too. So. Pinion gear comes off. There's that little trap for the uh, anti-reverse. So I'm going to lay it down the way it belongs because you don't want to get that anti-reverse one backwards. I'm going to take a brush to get the old grease out of the, the channel of the pinion gear. Clean it up nicely. Then we're going to use fishing reel grease. In this case, I'm going to use pen precision reel grease. And we'll get some new grease onto the channels of that pinion gear. Now we're going to install that click ratchet for the anti-reverse gear. And that's why I kept the orientation the way I did. And then I'm going to flood the bearing here with some fresh oil I'm using Real X, which is a uh, it's an aftermarket fishing reel oil, but it's a fishing reel oil. That's the uh, the key word there. Use a fishing reel oil. Don't use uh, others as substitutes. I guess if you wanted to substitute in a in a pinch, you could use a three in one or something. But um, if it's not designed for fishing reels, chances are it won't have the same. Uh, characteristics that would be make it long lasting and best lubricating that uh, those that are designed for marine applications and the like would have. All right, we're going to reinstall this then. That's why I left these three screws right on the bench. Put those back. Just going to get them started before I start tightening them down. And the heads of these screws actually hold that bearing from falling out. Because when you go to tighten the rotor onto the pinion gear, if you didn't have these holds, the rotor wouldn't uh, be held fast to the reel itself. Alright, one more of these to go. 
So I think in the Silstar line, I think you see a lot more of these in Europe than you do in the U.S. At one time, I saw a lot of these in the U.S., and then they kind of just went away. From what I understand of the company history, and I don't know much about it, and it's kind of hard to find the history about it, was that it was actually a consortium of European real distributors looking to create a uh, brand that would uh, help them compete against some of the major brands at a lower price point. So uh, that would make sense as to why you would see more of these in Europe. All right, I've just checked all the teeth on the Crosswine gear. They're all uniform. There's no chips or cracked or missing ones. I put uh, grease all around the face of this one as well because that Crosswine block will slide up and down on that face. And then we're going to reinstall this onto the stud in the case. When you reinstall onto the stud in the case, make sure that the point or the stud that the crosswind block is going to ride in is uh, on the down position. Okay, and then we're just going to clean the old grease out of the crosswind block. Clean it off the face here. This is why I wear the glove as you're, you're holding it. That grease is kind of getting there. So we'll just clean the rest of it off with a paper towel. Nice shiny crosswind block now. And then we can go reinstall that crosswind block. Now, if, if you, uh, this one's pretty easy because it's, it's hard to get that one upside down, but there are others that are certainly easier to get upside down. Uh, and that's where pictures come into play. You want to uh, take pictures along the way in case you get disoriented and find that. Uh, the, uh, you don't know which way the, the piece goes, like I was saying with that uh, uh, click ratchet for the anti-reverse. There's, uh, there's definitely two ways, and if you put it on upside down, the feature wouldn't work. You see, slots for that uh, anti-reverse bar to go would be pointed the wrong way. i just get the last of that old grease off. Now this reel has a little metal tag hanging out of it. You probably see it here. I, I tried to point that out when we were taking it off. As I take off the last of the old grease, that little tag belongs in this hole here. Now sometimes when they use this setup with that tag, there's a window or a hole to look through the main gear to see that so that you can sight it. As it goes into that slot. Sometimes there isn't. This is that's the case here. There isn't, but don't worry about it. I'll take it that you can sight it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and get the end of the main gear into the bushing. I want to get a little bit of grease onto the crosswind drive part of that gear. And I want to align the slot so that the piece goes in. And we just did that. It just worked out perfect. OK, a little bit of grease onto the back side of the main gear. That'll take care of the uh, bushing. You can align all of that. Snap the case back on. I just heard this. That's very good. Oops. Getting ahead of myself here. Silly me. I didn't put the axle shaft in. And that's a good reason for looking at the... Uh, I'm going to do this again. Looking into your parts tray. Because you'll notice we were missing the axle shaft. When I stored that, I went and I put the screw in there so I don't lose it. I'll put a light coat onto the axle shaft. Can insert that and bring that down into the crosswind block, and we're going to make sure that the hole in the axle shaft aligns with the hole in the crosswind block. And we can go ahead and put that screw in so that it's held down for good. And then we can put the side plate on.
And we got that nice snap again. We noted when we took this apart that the four screws are all the same, so it doesn't matter which position you put them in in the case itself. And I like to go north, south, east, west on that. I don't like to go circular if there's any kind of bind in the case. That last screw will cause the case to, to bend or that. So if you kind of go opposite corners, then you generally find that you can keep the graphite cases from binding. And come over to the bottom here. And then we'll finish this up top on the other side. So next step then would be to install the rotor. And we'll do that in a moment. One more screw to tighten down here. Okay, so we've serviced the pinion gear, all the internal gears. We've got the bearing all oiled. We can then reinstall the rotor. There was a little lock washer that went on the shaft first. Then the nut went on and the nut was held on in a, in a traditional uh, clockwise tightening. And I like to do as much of that by hand as I can. And then we'll grab that uh, wrench. And we'll finish the tightening. We can give it a spin, and that spins nicely. Okay, there's a click ratchet that went on next. And then there was a little washer that adjusts the spool height. That facilitates the, the line, keeping it even. And the spool is winding. All right, so let's take a look at those washers then, see what we have. We have a clip ring here. That clip ring rides in a groove, and we can go ahead and take that out. That's a spring, so please be careful as you're removing it that it doesn't shoot. Get a good grasp on it. And I like to take a little pick here and see what we have. So I'm going to clean that channel first. There's a little old grease in there, like everything else. And we have felt washers. So felt washers get a uh, couple of drops of oil on each one. You want to keep these things oiled because if you don't, they dry out. And if they dry out, they crack. So uh, best to make sure that they have oil. You can over, over oil them actually. It's Nothing's going to happen other than the excess is going to run off when you tighten the, uh, the drag down. But that's one place you don't have to worry about over oiling. You want to keep those wet. And then you have a circular one or a keyed washer. Then you have the eared washer with the two points on it that goes in the middle. And then a circular one goes to the end. Now I'm just working the clip in. I want to make sure that it gets into the groove. Got one that's just riding a little bit below the groove. There's real no, really no problem with that. This just holds the stack in and the drag adjuster is the one that puts the pressure on it. So that spring is really for placement more than anything else. We'll tighten this down, put the handle on it, and give it a test drive. So that's the Silster Edge 40. It's a nice reel. It's an entry-level reel, but that's okay. And uh, it's a shame that the reel foot is broken, but I'm not going to sell this reel. I'm going to give this reel away. And I'm sure we're going to find somebody who's going to figure out how to, to jam that into the real seat, zip tie it or something else, and uh, take this guy fishing because look, it's ready to go fishing. It's got a nice uh, feel to it for the, uh, the setup. 
that's, that's going to go catch a lot of fish. So if you have one of these, you now know how to, uh, to tune it up. If you have one similar, you know that you should be tuning these up on a, on a regular basis at a, at a year interval at a minimum. If uh, you're thinking about buying one of these, you kind of get an inside look in terms of what this reel is made of. And uh, if you uh, have any comments, please leave them. I try to respond to them on, regardless if it's on this reel or a different reel that uh, you may have a question about. Uh, if you want to see more of these, please subscribe. And finally, if you have a reel that uh, needs repair or needs a, needs a tune-up and uh, you don't have the time to do it yourself, uh, and you would like me to work on that, well, please send me an email to the contact information on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with the real repair information. So please stay well, stay safe, listen to the authorities, wear the masks, take the proper precautions. Let's get this together so that we all can uh, help beat this dreadful disease. So with that, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.